This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Tesla is shoring up the raw materials it needs to make batteries for its electric vehicles. The EV maker just signed a nickel supply deal with Talon Metals, Tesla's first U.S. nickel deal. Tesla chose Talon because it's developing a way to mine nickel more environmentally friendly. But Tesla still needs to find a way to refine it since the U.S. does not have a nickel refinery. With more and more EVs hitting the market in the coming years, the price of nickel is expected to grow significantly over the next decade. And speaking of Tesla, it sold a record number of vehicles in China last month. According to the China Passenger Car Association, Tesla sold nearly 71,000 made-in-China cars in December. That's three times higher than a year ago and up a third compared to November. Reuters estimates that Tesla sold close to 475,000 made-in-China vehicles in 2021, which is close to half of the 936,000 cars it sold globally. And while Tesla is booming in China, Volkswagen is struggling to sell its electrics in the country. The automaker sold just under 71,000 of its ID electrics in 2021, which was short of its goal of 80 to 100,000 sales. VW blames the chip shortage and regional COVID outbreaks for missing the target. However, VW expects things to rebound and says it plans to double sales of its ID electrics in China this year. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. Toyota has a new top of the line version of the Tundra and thy name is Capstone. It's only offered in one body configuration, crew max four door with a five and a half foot bed. Unique styling elements include the grille design, chrome accents, and 22-inch wheels, the largest ever featured on the Tundra. The interior is highlighted by premium materials, its own unique color combinations, and the biggest displays that Toyota offers. The capstone also comes standard with Toyota's driver assistance system, called Toyota Safety Sense, and its towing technology package. The new truck starts arriving at dealers this spring in the U.S., And while it didn't reveal a price, this is not going to be a cheap pickup. More people want to trek out into the great outdoors, and Ford is going to help them. In Germany, it's teaming up to provide customer-ready recreational vehicles and motorhomes. Ford will supply panel van and stripped-down chassis cab versions of the Transit and Transit Custom, which will then be converted by Erwin Heimer Group. The deal between the two companies starts this year and ends in 2024. Speaking of camper vans, check out this one from Mitsubishi, which is an electric K car that's decked out with a bunch of camping gear. The vehicle is being shown off at the Tokyo Auto Show, along with a number of other concepts. That includes another electric K car called the KEV Concept Cross Style, which is pouring on the Mitsubishi design language really strong. This is actually a vehicle it's likely jointly developing with Nissan, who will also get its own version and should have a starting price around $18,000. And as we've been reporting, Mitsubishi is bringing back the Rally Art brand and showed off how that sporty character could be applied to a number of vehicles, including a dedicated concept called the Vision Rally Art. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more from the Tokyo Auto Show, which kicks off this Friday. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. We hope you enjoyed our coverage at CES last week, and you can find our reports on our website under the AutoLine on the Road section or on our YouTube channel. And here are some more of the technologies that caught our eye. So how do you keep ADAS and autonomous sensors clean? Air jets or water jets and wipers are one way to clean them off, 
but TTP, a tech engineering company in England, has a more elegant solution. It uses ultrasonics. A ring around the perimeter of the sensor emits ultra-high sound waves which atomize any water or condensation or dirt on the lens. TTP is working with Texas Instruments to develop the system, which uses very little power and could be run continuously in bad weather. TTP is even exploring whether it could be used on windshields or at least part of the windshield in front of the driver. LoonWave is a U.S. company that's bringing down the cost of radar for ADAS with an antenna design that's 3D printed. It only uses 10 grams of material, and LoonWave says one 3D printing machine can make 350,000 radar antennas a year. The radar antenna looks like a mini Death Star, and because it is ball-shaped, it can see in all directions, whereas flat antennas can only see in one direction. That means automakers can use fewer radar units on a car. LoonWave says a typical Level 2 ADAS system may need up to 12 radar sensors, but with its design, only two to four are needed. So not only is it cheaper to manufacture, you need fewer of them. LoonWave says an unnamed Tier 1 supplier will start making these radars in 2024 for a Level 2 valet parking system. Opsis is an Israeli startup that is slashing the cost of making LiDAR for autonomous vehicles. It uses solid-state technology with no moving parts or liquid inside. Instead, it uses an array of lasers that turn on and off 1,000 times a second. The lasers are on a chip, and when the laser beams hit an object, they reflect back and are captured by a detection array. The LiDAR unit is about the size of a credit card and could be integrated into the headlamps of a car. Opsis says it brought the cost down to less than $200 per sensor. Two Tier 1 suppliers in China, one in Europe, and the SL Corporation in South Korea will be making these units, which will be in production late this year or in early 2023. And lastly, Intrepid Controls unveiled this battery cell measurement and network testing hardware for automakers that use a wireless battery management system. Intrepid worked with the chip company Analog Devices to develop the unit. It monitors cell voltage, cell current, ambient temperature, cell slash unit voltage, impedance, and temperature, and is compatible with many types of battery chemistries. Well, that's a wrap for today's show. Thanks for joining us. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.